Hey guys, in this episode, we're gonna be talking about adding the Google Analytics JavaScript to your Rails application and making it Turbolinks compatible. So I recently upgraded my Google Analytics integration from the old JavaScript to the GTAG JS, or the Global Site Tag JavaScript that they've added. And it's pretty straightforward to add. You grab their JavaScript and you add it to your head tag in your Rails app. So if we add this, all we need to change in this to make it Turbolinks compatible is this config line, which actually triggers a page view. We're going to say document.add event listener on the Turbolinks load event. We want to have a function that handles that event and we will process that with the config line. So this is going to make it Turbolinks compatible. It will fire events every time Turbolinks loads a page. And the only thing we really need to change here to make it a little bit more reliable is to go through and pass in the options for the page uh, location, which will be our event data URL, our page path, which is going to be event.sourceElement dot location dot path name and our page title which is event dot source element dot title and these are just going to tell explicitly the page url the path and the title to google analytics so it can't mess it up because we are changing that stuff dynamically and if it was looking at some old data like the old url when you loaded the page um, then that would be wrong. So we can pass in that information to make sure it's uh, accurate every single time. And it just comes from the Turbolinks event. Um, and you can inspect it, console log this event and then inspect it and play around and, and access any of the data that you need. And that is all there is to it. And we now have a analytics event that will be fired. We are on the slash privacy URL. If you go to slash terms, we will see that page event come through in just a second. There it is. And now we're on slash terms. So it's going to catch all of these page views and update um, correctly inside Google Analytics. Now, this code is all written inside of our head tag, though. And that's not generally something that uh, I prefer to do. And this is also not going to be easily accessible inside of our JavaScript either inside of Webpacker. So what we're gonna do is actually get rid of all this code here and move it to Webpacker. Now we'll leave the line for the global site tag because that's going to be loaded um, asynchronously. It's going to load that code that we had here. The way that it works is pretty straightforward. It creates a data layer window variable. That data layer is an empty array at the beginning and this contains all of the events that you wanna to give to Google Analytics. You can add events immediately using this function gtag, and it will just push the arguments into that array, and Google Analytics will process that whenever it gets to it. And you are able to process and, and push events immediately as soon as you want. So what we can do is move this into our application JS JavaScript. Now, I'm going to import this from another file. So what we're going to do is we're going to create source analytics. So app JavaScript source analytics JS. We can paste our JavaScript in here, get rid of the script tags. And we'll go down here and move this in. And basically the two things that we need to have set up here are the data layer and the gtag. Um, function. Now what we can do is we can export default that gtag function. So all of our other JavaScript can import gtag from source analytics and it can call it from inside of this file now. So all of our JavaScript can actually import this file and get access to it so it can trigger its own events. So if you want to do a more complex integration with Google Analytics, this is what you're going to want to do so that you can set that up so that they can import this from other files in order to um, set up their own custom events that are being triggered. So this code is going to be loaded the very first time that you import that. And if you happen to import this from a second time, for example, we can simulate that by importing it a second time as a different variable in our main file. What you'll see here is that this is only going to get loaded 
one. So we'll say console.log loaded. And if we run this in our console, we'll see loaded is printed out one time even though we imported it two times. So that is important so that we're not getting duplicate uh, event listeners here being created. We only want to do that a single time. And that's going to be defined, it's going to be executed, and we're gonna be good. So anytime we import this now in the future, we're always going to get that same G tag function that we defined in here, and we can use that to trigger events anywhere in our code. For example, we could say G tag, um, you know, anything we wanted in here. So a hello, we could put in here and trigger that event listener in there, and that's going to work just fine. So if we console.log window.data layer, you should see in here that it has access to that as well. And our G tag hello event was added here. Now Google Analytics doesn't know what to do with that and that's a-okay, but it is added there. And so you can see that event. So that's all there really is to adding Google Analytics to your Rails applications and making it Turbolinks compatible. This export is really useful if you wanna organize your code a bit more inside of Webpacker. And you can take this exact same approach and apply it to segment analytics, um, mix panel. There's all kinds of other analytics tools you can use and you can basically implement it the exact same way uh, because they all have the similar kind of structure of pushing events to an array so that the analytics JavaScript can go and process those as that array is being modified. So that is it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it useful. And I will talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.